Well, um, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to be here. This will be slightly different because it will be the colleagues' point of view. Dave and I were colleagues from 1990 through 2016. And I have to say that I am totally thrilled to be in the first meeting he and I have ever been at in which I have a tie on and he does not. This is just <laughs> planned. I was hoping it would, it, would, it would turn out this way. So I, um, I wrote something which I'll, uh, which I'll read. Dr. Dave was always a calming presence in faculty meetings, doing his level best to keep ev everything from going off the rails. For no fault of his own, his own, he did not always succeed. He always brought cookies, demure in their Tupperware tub, perhaps to keep the departmental blood sugar level above the hangry mark, and he took copious notes on his laptop. Sometimes I wondered if he was assembling a secret archive of some of the most antic behavior ever known in academic life, though he often volunteered his notes as minutes. He had also perhaps found a way to stay busy and shielded from the potential blow-ups. Post-war campus novels are typically set in English departments, but there were times in our department's history that could rival any campus novel for crazed and tragicomic material. I'm not sure I want to be around on Judgment Day when the Book of Life is opened and Dr. Dave's note, notes are finally spoken from the rooftops. One likes to fantasize that in writing them, he let loose a bit and left the running sarcastic commentary on the cast of characters and array of tortured speech acts. But no doubt, it is all decorous and all bile is repressed. If Dr. Dave's Dave's notes were copious, so were his book collections. This has already come up in the uh, chat. His office could sometimes seem like a maze with labyrinthine pa passageways between horizontally stacked books, plus a lot of library books on the shelves. He worked and perhaps even lived a bit in his office, though he did hire my son Daniel a time or two to help haul books to and from his house on Samoa Drive. So one senses that the book collections in Becker were only the tip of the iceberg. He had the generous habit of leaving his door open during the day, watchfully raising his eyes to passersby, but he shut the door at night. If you came by Becker at night, you could see his office lights glowing from outside. I always felt bad during the day when I'd walk by and discover I'd interrupted a meal, but he'd always look up politely over his laptop. His interest in rhetoric comes, one suspects, from deeply personal wells. Dr. Dave is a deeply honest man of great integrity, but he's also a slightly cagey figure. There are some things about him that nobody knows. Maybe this is true of all of us, but he has some rarely fathomed depths. He is a man of principle, holding to, one's, holding to what one expects are a brand, a brand of politics that hardly exist anymore in their spanning of conservative and liberal or conservatively liberal tendencies. I admire the Princeton classiness, the tie, the formality, the genteel approach. Though fascinated by argument and constitutionally reasonable, he, like me, is deeply averse to quarrels. We identified in our common state as being poorly armed against some of the less well-behaved Machiavellians around us. When I was department chair, I could always rely on him for any mop-up task and ask him to serve on an ad hoc committee or two to deal with an impossible situation or two, whose details I will disclose when his laptop notes are fully made public. That is, never. He was a glutton for punishment in departmental service, serving many times as director of undergraduate studies and anchoring the big lecture class theory and practice of argument, TPA. He is the embodiment of a critical servant. Rhetoric can be raunchy and slimy, but it can also be dignified and discreet. Its available means of persuasion can range from a Twitter account to cookies in a Tupperware tub. If you don't believe there can be such a thing as noble rhetoric or want to know what it looks like, please look to the person of Dr. David B. Hinksman. Thanks for listening. <laughs>